Hello guys. Hello. Welcome to my YouTube channel at Marine Engineering Kenya. How have you been? And where are you watching us from? Uh, please let us know in the comments below. In, the, in this video, we're going to discuss marine engineering as a career, what it is and all that it entails, specifically for the Kenyan context or rather the East African context. But before that, thank you so much for being part of this family, the Marine Engineering Kenya online family. So for the new viewers, make sure to subscribe. And for the returning viewers, thank you so much for keeping it here and like our videos, share them and also comment on where you don't us to improve. So especially for people who are joining college and they will be interested in this content, you can share with them. Maybe among your friends or your social media circles, you can also share the link with them. So we're going to start by defining what marine engineering is. It is the discipline of engineering that is focused on the design, development, operation, and maintenance of seafaring vessels and other ocean systems. So these are fields that combines both engineering and also the ocean. So in case you're interested in both, then it merges your passion for the ocean and the power of engineering. So you know, I'm sure you've probably heard of this phrase. It's a common phrase where it says that marine engineering is basically mechanical engineering, but now it's applied on water. So if you're intrigued by the inner workings of a ship, uh, the underwater world, and interested in contributing to sustainable maritime technologies, then marine engineering would be a perfect career path for you. Uh, let's look into the details of what it involves uh, because you don't have to limit yourself to just working on ships because that's the first thought that comes to mind that you have, you're only limited to working on ships. Now, marine engineering offers various specializations depending on your interests. So you could focus on areas like naval architecture that is, that is in ship design and construction. Uh, there is ocean engineering, the, that is oceanographic structures and systems. You could also focus on marine robotics and uh, autonomous underwater vehicles like we are now seeing the in-water survey of vessels being done where vessels don't have to be uh, gotten to dry, taken to dry dock for the operations to go on, for dry dock operations to go on. So inspection can still be done. Some are robotics and they're done underwater. And there's also underwater welding, which is an interesting area to look into. So another aspect is under the ship, designing and building, it's where all sorts of watercraft or vessels such as tankers, ships, cruise ships, offshore platforms, the submarines, every part of this, it involves a marine engineer to build and design. Uh, the, uh, the marine engineer also comes in during the maintenance and operation of the vessel, but from the design phase, um, an engineer has to be involved in addition to the naval architects and other shipyard operations that you're going to discuss in a separate video. The other aspect is propulsion. So keeping these vessels moving across the water requires very powerful engines and propulsion systems. So marine engineers design, install, maintain, and troubleshoot these systems, which can include the diesel engines, the traditional diesel engines, or maybe you now with the improvements, we have ammonia engines, we have dual fuel engines, um, there is also electrical propulsion. Uh, then there could be steam turbines on board for power generation and such. And the, there is also hybrid propulsion systems lately. Then there is the, the onboard systems. Modern ships are complex and have internal systems that need to function flawlessly. Any ship of reasonable size contains a number of systems for propulsion, for crew safety and operations, which are normally carried out by the ship's crew, in this case the marine engineers, they are responsible for the design, operation and upkeep of these systems. And the systems could include the electrical systems for power generation and distribution, uh, there's the navigation and communication systems, there's the heating, ventilation and air conditioning systems, there's plumbing and sanitation systems, uh, there's refrigeration systems, mm. what other have I forgotten? There are sewage systems, there are so many systems on board a vessel. We'll probably cover them in future in various videos. 
but you can list them, some of which you remember and some of which you're interested in knowing so that you will let us know in the comments. Then beyond the ships, there's the field of marine engineering extends beyond just working on vessels. It can also be involved in the design and engineering of offshore oil and gas platforms such as Padito oil platform in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico. You can check that out. There are resources available online that discuss that. So offshore oil and gas platforms are essentially self-contained mini cities or industrial cities that are built on top of the, of the ocean, extracting valuable resources, uh, mainly petroleum and natural gas, and some minerals. Like uh, offshore, the coast of Namibia, the, the Benguela gems, the vessel that mines there. So... These massive structures house crew, they have machinery, they have uh, sub services like processing of whatever they have extracted and also for the storage. Uh, the other thing is offshore wind platforms such as the Hornsea Wind Farm in the North Sea of the coast of England. So offshore wind power or offshore wind energy is energy taken from the force of the winds out at sea, transformed into electricity, and supplied into the electricity network on shore. So one of the major advantages of this type of wind energy is that it floats in the sea, so it ensures more stable wind speeds while avoiding any possible obstacles. Ultimately, it's renewable energy generated from the wind that's safe and environmentally friendly. Uh, then there's offshore construction such as bridges. In Kenya, we have the Dongo Kundu project, which involves it's, con it's still ongoing, still not yet launched. It involves it involved maritime engineering expertise from companies from Xeco and Comaco, among others. Then there's exploration or adventure ships uh, like as ice breakers. Uh, there are now over 70 Antarctic cruise ships sailing across the Southern Ocean towards the white continent, mainly because it's covered in ice. And what we know about Antarctica is the penguins. So that's something also that intrigues people when they want to visit such areas. Then there are also shoreside and managerial, uh, super, uh, managerial supervisory positions. So like um, maybe a dockyard, KPA dockyard role at the Kenya Ports Authority. Uh, we also have ports, Kisumu ports. There's so many roles that one can work on shore, uh, marine doesn't the, taking the course doesn't have to limit you to working just on, on vessels. Then there are power plants. This is a question that most people are, ask: Why? What is the link between a marine engineer and a power plant? The link is that most of the systems are similar or can be li uh, can be linked. And for instance, the diesel engines in a thermal power plant are similar to the engines applied marine vessels for propulsion so if you look at companies that produce such engines like